Hello everyone, welcome to Real Science Challenge. I'm Kent Louie, science teacher and talking head. Broadcasting from beautiful Vancouver, Canada. And as science teachers, I think we spend a good amount of time going over how to produce a proper graph. You know, with labeled X and Y axis, titles and units and correct data plotting. But how much time do we spend teaching students how to analyze a graph when one is put in front of them? You know, can students look at a graph and understand what's going on. I explain to kids that this is an important skill to have because graphs aren't just those boring ones we see in textbooks with X and Y axis anymore. Graphs have become more visual, more sophisticated, more artistic, artistic, excuse me, especially if they're being published online, in newspapers, and in magazines. So at Burnaby South Secondary, I put together a workshop for grade eight and grade nine students that did just that. Teach graph analysis using some fun graphs like this one. Before I continue, handouts for this activity can be found at realsciencechallenge.com slash EP45. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Before I begin, all the graphs I used for my workshop, including some of the discussion questions, is from the New York Times activity known as What's Going On in This Graph? So a big thanks to New York Times. If you're looking for well-produced graphs on relevant topics to use with your classes, the New York Times activity is a good place to start. I also added some of my own leading questions to help students get started analyzing graphs, which I'll talk about later. But New York Times, if you're watching and would like a teacher who can talk about how I use these graphs to engage my students, give me a shout. As for graph analysis itself, first, I give students this handout and tell them that we're going to answer these three big questions on the first side of the handout when analyzing a graph. These questions come from the New York Times activity. Questions like, what do you notice? What do you wonder? And what's going on in the graph? In other words, what is a catchy headline you can write for the graph? To give them a little bit more structure in graph analysis, I give students a few more questions, which actually is on the back of the handout. Questions like, oops, <laughs> questions like, uh, what type of graph is it? Uh, what is being represented on the x and y axis? What are the units? And what's the relationship between x and y? Then, we go over a couple examples together. Examples like this one. So to answer the questions, what's being represented on the x-axis? Well, it is the percent of Americans who think a food item is healthy. And according to this, 10% of Americans think pop is healthy, which is surprising. On the y-axis, it is the percentage of nutritionists who say a food is healthy. Now, nutritionists are people who go to college to study, you know, food and diets. And according to this, 0% of nutritionists say pop is healthy, which makes sense because of all that sugar in pop. Now, what's interesting is what are foods that both regular Americans and nutritionists can agree on is healthy. And that's found way up here in the upper right-hand cor upper corner, which is apples and oranges, but 100%. And other things they agree on, uh, like hamburgers, way over here, 30% of Americans and 30% of Nutritionists say hamburgers are healthy. Now, are there any foods on this graph where regular Americans and nutritionists don't agree? That would be foods that aren't on this line, this linear relationship. That would be things like this, granola and frozen yogurt. They don't agree. This is something we notice. So to answer the questions over here, I wonder why. And perhaps it's because although granola might be healthy in its ingredients, like nuts and oats and seeds and anything else that goes in there, afterwards we put a whole bunch of honey and maple syrup and sugar to make it taste good. So suddenly it becomes less healthy. Frozen yogurt, people hear, oh, yogurt must be healthy. But in fact, put in some toppings, put in some syrup, suddenly frozen yogurt, not so healthy anymore. Now, going back to this, what is a catchy headline that captures the graph's main idea. Perhaps, try this one, perhaps granola 
and frozen yogurt isn't as healthy as regular Americans are led to believe. What do you think? Pretty good? I don't know. Just, just testing it. All right. I go over one more graph together with the students, looking at the axes, going over what we notice, what we wonder, and what a catchy headline might be. It all takes about 10 to 15 minutes. Then I give them the following four graphs. All right, this one, this one, and a couple of more. And I get them to work in groups to analyze and write a catchy headline for. It takes about 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. After, I get three groups to share their headlines, going over each graph one at a time. And during my workshop, I had teachers supervising, and I got them to also vote for the one headline out of the three that they thought was the catchiest for that graph. Group members got a small chocolate, a Hershey Kiss, as a prize. Now, kids liked it. They liked figuring out what the graphs said writing a catchy headline, and of course, they liked the candy. And from a teacher's perspective, it was a huge win because students were really engaged in looking at the graph, figuring out a relationship or a story they can capture in a headline. And the idea of a catchy headline is also very creative. It's a less formal, high-impact way of having students work through a graph. That's it for this episode. Please smash the like or subscribe buttons below, or leave a comment. Handouts, once again, which include these graphs and the questions, can be found at realsciencechallenge.com slash EP45. Thanks for watching, and let's talk science again soon.